Welcome to this KNXT special presentation. I'm Rosa Marie. I'll be your host for this edition. And we are so blessed here at KNXT to have with us Father Cedric Piseña, who is one of the hosts of one of our series, two of our series actually. And you can see him three times here every week on KNXT on Sundays at 4 o'clock. Mondays at 8 p.m. and Thursdays with li Live with Passion at 9.30. Welcome, Father, and t thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule Rosa to be Maria, with us. It's so nice to finally meet you. Nice to meet you. We've been in contact yeah. for all these years. We've been emailing each other a lot. <laughs> absolutely, and I'm so thankful that you've uh, had my programs here in Fresno in the Bakersfield area. I've heard from so many of so many of your viewers and uh, listeners and thank you thank you thank you for this opportunity to be with you we're so blessed to have you among our programs because we know how you've reached people you have a very special message you have a very positive message a very welcoming message for those who are in community of faith and those of us some of our brothers and sisters who have not been part of the community for some time. That's right. I think that TV uh, is a place, it's a church without walls. And what we try to do is go beyond the church walls out to everybody. Because the message of Jesus was for everybody. So whether you're going to church or not going to church, you're welcome. And Jesus wants you to become a follower and he wants to bless you with eternal life. So the opportunity of television is such that we can reach out to believers and non-believers alike and uh, hopefully inspire everybody with the truth. Father, you, you travel so much and uh, you've, you've been a priest 21 years. 21 years, yeah. And I do know that, that people always sort of wonder, you know, how, how you were called, what your vo how you felt your vocation and uh, how did, how, what, did, what moment, was it a moment or was it a series of events that led you to the priesthood? Well, I was born and brought up Catholic. I was baptized as an infant and confirmed in the eighth grade and fell away during my teenage years. And then I started getting this real desire for truth, to want to know truth in my life. Came to the scriptures, heard God speak to me. And I had a, a moment, an encounter one night with the Holy Spirit that revolutionized my life. And I sensed God's love for me personally, and uh, the, a deep touch within totally changed my life. Ever since that, I've been different. I felt a call to proclaim the gospel, and now I preach about the Holy Spirit. I was just in St. Rita's in Tulare, just finished a mission last night. People everywhere, hundreds of people, many of you viewers, talked about the Holy Spirit. And one of the things that I say about the Holy Spirit is that, and, and I discovered this, is that we all have the spirit within. Most people just don't know it. There needs to be an awakening, a rediscovery, a fresh new baptism with the Holy Spirit. And that's what people encountered last night. So really, when you ask me about my vocation, I say the Holy Spirit. Of course, the Holy Spirit is God himself living within us. There's power, there's grace, there's an anointing for all of us to encounter God and uh, revolutionize my life. So we, all of us should be try to be open to the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, in our, in our open and, and also uh, hungry for more of God, uh, actively seeking so that you can receive. One of the things that I said last night is, go to your room and pray in secret, and your Heavenly Father who sees you in secret will reward you. And that's exactly what happened in my life. As I sought God on my own, reading the scriptures, spending time in prayer, that's when things started happening for me. So that's what Jesus said. Go to your room, pray to your Father in secret. Your Father who sees you in secret will reward you. And, that's a, and the reward is the anointing of eternal life, and it's awesome. There's a tremendous spirit in you that we all <laughs> feel, and, and your message is so affirming. I think this is, I know this is what the world needs. This is what each and every yeah, one of us needs, yeah. is to be affirmed. And in, in some of your presentations, you've said, you know, things like you are God's child and you're special. And there is nothing about you that isn't special. And if you have any negative feelings, those aren't from God. I really believe that... Uh People need to hear positive things and encouraging things. When I look at the ministry of Jesus, that's pretty much what he did. He lifted people up. 
He reached out to the poor, the lonely, the broken. He reached out to women who were outcasts in that day, and he embraced them. He was very inclusive. And in the same way, we need to be that way too, because that's what the gospel is all about. I think we all grew up in different denominations, the church, where we were kind of beat down and told how bad we were and how wicked we were and, you know, kind of given a poor image of who God is. And, but that's not the God that I encountered. When the Holy Spirit touched me, I encountered a very loving God, a God who is for me, not against me. And as I read the scriptures, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. God is for you, not against you. And I've discovered in my own life that there's this negative voice and this positive voice within us. And whichever voice you pay attention to, that's who you're going to become. My ministry is all about helping people to become the best that they can be, to realize their potential, and to live with passion. And in order to do that, you can't be going around saying, I'm no good, or my family's never going to accomplish anything, or I'm never going to do anything in my life. You have to listen to that positive voice within. And I really believe that positive voice is the voice of the Holy Spirit. You are anointed. You are called. You are chosen. You are God's son, God's daughter. And I'm not just making this up. This is right from the Bible. So really, yes, my message is positive. It's inspirational. I, I, it's encouraging. I want to reach out to all people because that's who God is. God is love and God is our Father. Amen. Father, we've had a relationship with you for uh, since 2007. Yeah, five and years now. Yeah, you know, we were trying to re I remember exactly how we found you. Our program uh, administrator at that time found your, you contacted you, I believe, and asked for your DVD. And we looked at it and we said, this is the kind of positive image that needs to be on KNXT. Thank you for doing that. Wow. And it, it's certainly been such a blessing for each and every one of us. Now, how have you felt that, have we, have we helped you in your ministry? Absolutely. I hear from uh, viewers, Bakersfield, Fresno, Visalia, all these different areas, and buying my books and my resources. Just had this mission uh, because of a parishioner. Uh, Zeke and his wife Judy gave me a call. I went to St. Rita's. Now I reached out to three, four, five hundred people in that area. Um, I'm coming to, I think it's St. Anthony's next May. Wonderful. I'm coming to Holy Cross in October. I have a Very prayer good. breakfast tomorrow morning. Yes. So you've helped me in terms of giving me a platform to reach out to people in this area. Now, I used to live in Sacramento. Nobody knew about me because I wasn't on TV. Mm -hmm. But for 10 years, I was in the Sacramento Diocese at our retreat center, Christ the King. And I would preach missions up and down the valley, but I never made it all the way down to Fresno. <laughs> and you've given me an opportunity to come to these mm -hmm. folks in Fresno. And I have to tell you, last night, we had the closing mass of the Holy Spirit for the retreat. And there was, I don't know, 400 people there. And the, I told them last night, I said, I've been to New York, I've been to California. Uh, well, California, I've been to Michigan and Texas and Louisiana and all these different places. And the, 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 the uh, power that I felt and the response and the, and the vivaciousness and the passion, you all are second to none. I mean, Wonderful. yeah, your community is <laughs> the Holy Spirit. <laughs> good people here. So thank you for giving oh, me a platform to come good. to visit. That's great. I well, really appreciate we it. We hope to continue our relationship with you, Father, because as I say, it is affirming. I'm trying as hard as I can to produce new materials and new... How do uh, you find time for all... You know, people, in I'm between sure the ask missions. you. <laughs> in between the missions when I'm it's, not writing, yeah. I know what I have to do. At least twice a year, I have to produce new programs to get them out mm -hmm. to all the Catholic stations right. around the country. Right. I'm also on the church channel which is a Trinity Broadcasting Network. And that brings nationally. up a problem. Uh, not a problem, it's just a question. I'm so happy that you're on there. And I wonder how it was that you were able to connect with them. Well, I have a TV broker who buys airtime for me. Oh, uh, not in the Catholic market so mm -hmm. much, but on secular stations. For example, I just started in Sacramento on their Fox TV station on Sunday mornings. I buy time in, in many different markets all around the United States. And I had been looking for a national opportunity, and, and my TV broker presented the Church Channel, which is a subsidiary of Trinity Broadcasting Network. And now I'm on four times a week on satellite, uh, DISH, Direct, AT&T, Sky Angel, and it reaches all around the United States. So although they're a, a quote, Protestant network, they welcome Catholicism, and they, they're very ecumenical, 
and they, they want the gospel to be proclaimed to all people in many different varieties and many different ways. So it's been a great opportunity for me, and I am reaching out now nationally in uh, that channel, plus many Catholic channels, plus the secular stations that I'm on, mm -hmm. and now radio. I'm also. on Relevant Radio and uh, Radio Maria in the South and other stations. I had a station in Cape May, New Jersey. I, I air in Philadelphia, I buy time in Philadelphia, and apparently the owner of this radio station saw the TV program. It's a Protestant station down there in mm -hmm. Cape May. He contacted me and he said, Father, we want to air your program Sunday mornings, 9 o'clock, prime time, because I like what you're saying about the Lord. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I welcome things like that. So opportunities open, doors open for me, mm -hmm. because as you say, when you speak the truth and you, and you speak in an encouraging, positive way, people respond. Doors open. And you certainly landed a good one with Trinity Broadcast Network. If some of our viewers may not know that Trinity Broadcast Network is a global network and yes, it is they are. very large. It's been around since the 70s. Right. And I'm so glad that they're embracing Catholic thought and a Catholic presence. Yes, I'm one of, I think, two priests that are on their, their yeah. network. And uh, I hear from people from, I'm trying to remember all these different, they have, a big, they have a big outreach in the Middle East. I've been hearing from people from Saudi Arabia oh. and these countries yeah. over there. I've heard from mm -hmm. South America. I've heard from New Zealand. You know, just the, watch the programs. It's, it's wonderful. But the other thing that the Church Channel does that I really like is they have an outreach to, to people in prison. Uh, some of the prisons right around this area uh, they reach into, because I've heard, you know, I get letters from people, in, I don't call them prisoners, I call them people in prison mm -hmm. because they're people. Some of them are really good Catholics who just have some things in the past that they did wrong and now they, they, they're great believers and they want to grow in their faith. And so we've started a pen pal ministry and that is a, a number of people that I have who partner with me write to these people on a periodic basis and reach out to them. And so it's, it's a wonderful thing that's grown up and I never, you know, I, I didn't even try to start it. It all just kind of happened through the grace of God. So we're going into prisons, we're going into hospitals, we're going into homes, we're going into hotels, we're going everywhere. It's a church without walls. And that's what TV does and that's what you're doing here at KNXT. You're reaching out to everybody. And, and we certainly need to use all the technologies at our fingertips to me do this yes, search, including this research and, and searching and out. Exactly. And so you seem, just by your website and by seeing how you work with television, Father, that you understand the importance of technology in evangelizing. Absolutely. How did you come to this understanding? Because it didn't happen overnight, and you've well, developed all this. First of all, we have an unprecedented uh, time that we're living in right now. Facebook, uh, computers, YouTube, which I understand that KNXT we is on. We are on YouTube, yeah, and you will be able to see this things. program. <laughs> uh, television, radio, we can reach out in a way that we never have been able to before. And when the Holy Spirit touched me, I, I had this fire to evangelize, to really share the good news, especially about eternal life and about salvation and about knowing that you're on the way to heaven, because this happened to me. And, and I want to reach out to young people and older people as well, but especially teenagers and different things. Well, I remember growing up as a young man, part of the, one of the catalysts in my conversion was, although he's a Protestant, he's, he's well known, Billy Graham. Oh, of course. And uh, Great his order. crusades that would come on TV, and I'd be like, wow, you know, God is touching me through these programs. And of course, you know, other people that are now on TV. And, and I said, I want to do that. I want God to work through me to touch people, and I'm finding out that that is happening. And different people like other different types of preaching, but there's a whole audience out there that like my type preaching. And uh, some people, you know, maybe not so much, but, you know, I think God puts all kinds of varieties of people on there to reach out to young, to old, to different denominations. And it's really important because TV, radio, computer, Facebook, all these different ways, are ways to reach out, as I said, beyond the walls of the church. And that's exactly what's happening. So I was touched as a young man through, through media. And now that we've had uh, our Pope proclaim, it went all the way to, to uh, Pope John the 23rd, I believe, and Pope Pius the Sixth, I think, before that. 
uh, Pope John Paul II, now Pope Benedict XVI, the new evangelization, part of the new evangelization is that it's gotta be new in its methods. And now that we have TV and radio and Vatican TV and all the different things, it's a tremendous way to reach out with the joy of the gospel to all peoples. So that was kind of a long answer. No, but <laughs> that's, no it gives us a very broad and inclusive answer. And when in your, all your travels, Father, how do you see individual parishes that you visit embracing this technology? Because I hear that people are first a little intimidated by the technology. They think it's difficult. And uh, then they say, well, we just don't have the staff to be able to do this and to, to utilize this very important tool. Well, I can tell you what it is. It's, ex it's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, producing yeah. TV programs, airing, yeah. you know, here at KNXT, you know, the, the studios that you have, it's on the campus of the diocese and right on the campus of a school. But it costs money to employ people and to, and people don't realize what this costs, you know, to produce programs, to air the programs. So please, if you've been a viewer, please donate to KNXT. <laughs> uh, please give to this effort. I mean, they, they are proclaiming the gospel 24-7 all across the valley here, and it's just wonderful. But uh, as I go to different parishes to answer your question, I think one of the major ways that they embrace the technology is through websites. Uh, each parish pretty much has a web. I used to go uh, preach a mission in a parish. They didn't even have internet. They didn't even have a wireless anywhere. Mm -hmm. Now everywhere I go, they have wireless internet. They have a parish website so that they can advertise, so that they can evangelize in different ways like that. that pr that's primarily how they do it on a local level. They don't so much get into TV and radio, although some places where I go, they actually have the mass recorded and they bring it into a radio station or a TV station. For example, I was just in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Lancaster is just a little bit west of Philadelphia. I was there about a month ago. And one of the masses on a Sunday morning, they actually tape it for TV and they broadcast it on one of the local cable access channels. And I'm in, I'm in process right now of getting my programs on right after that local mass because when I saw that happening, I contacted the cable people and I said, you know, I've got programs. And it's in process. It, nothing happens really quickly. But so to me, you know, parishes like that that are willing to pay the money, you know, get the camera people, do the production, and reach out to the town, to their city of Lancaster, that's Amish country, but it's also very Catholic country. There's a lot of people in nursing homes. There's a lot of people in hospitals. There's a lot of people in hotels that they're reaching out to on a local level. So some parishes are stepping up and they're evangelizing through TV and through radio, but most of them, it would be more websites and you know that kind of a thing because they don't have the money or the technology to do it or the, the initiative. But it's interesting, some dioceses, like Fresno, have stepped up and they've gotten a, a Catholic TV station, they've paid the money, they've employed the people, and they're reaching out all around. <clears throat> Other dioceses, like Houston, for example, where I live, you know, they've got some media things going on, but they don't do anything like what you're doing. If we had a TV station like this in Houston, we could touch millions of people. But, you know, you have to have local people donating. You have to have the bishop taking the initiative. You have to have people like you who are willing to invest their lives in it. And unfortunately, it's not happening in some of the larger cities. Pe pe places like Fresno, Baton Rouge, Scranton, uh, San Antonio, it is happening. Uh, but other places it isn't. But, you know, it just depends. It's stepping out in faith to... Uh, try to get this off the ground to use the, those instruments of technology as you say father yeah. to reach out there to reach everyone right and not just our catholic community but the extended community that's right and that's what evangelization is you know evangelization costs not just money but time and effort and initiative and you know sowing seeds and you've been, you've had this TV station here for now 20? 26 years. 26 years. Mm -hmm. Think about the millions of people that are mm -hmm. being touched and have been touched over those 26 mm -hmm. years. Thank you for all of you who are already donating to KNXT. You know, this is one of my 
stations. It's, it's close to my heart. Please continue to help you know, local people, Catholics, even non-Catholics. I have Baptist people donating to me, yes. uh, evangelicals donating to me, Catholic people donating to me. All people need to help us to reach out with quality programming, faith-based programming that are helping people. And uh, it does cost a lot of money. That's true, but it's, it's so worth it's it. It's so worth it, and yeah. And I always think of St. Paul, wouldn't he be so happy <laughs> to have this platform? And I think he would certainly make use of everything. Yes, he would. Ev Absolutely. Every little thing that, 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 could, that makes us uh, able to reach out to each and every person That's right. in the community. That's right, because a lot of people don't come to church. We can't expect them to come to us. We got to go to them. You know, this is the way to do it. That's really key, Father. That have you noticed within the last 10, 20 years that we as a Catholic Church need to look at evangelization so differently? People do not can't, don't count on them coming to us. Right. We have to reach out to them. That's right. And by the way, just the word the word evangelization, evangelion in the Greek, it means the gospel. So evangelization, it's kind of, especially in Catholicism, it had kind of a bad connotation of evangelists that are out there just trying to raise money. Well, actually, it's, it's proclaiming the good news of a personal relationship with Jesus, going to heaven, having salvation, knowing peace in your heart. That's, that's what evangelization is. And when I encountered the Holy Spirit as a young man and my life was changed, that's why I wanted to become a priest. That's why I wanted to reach out because I want everybody to know you know, what it is that I know, this eternal life. It was years ago, uh, I, be I believe it was Pope, uh, Pope John the Twenty-Third wrote, no, Pope Paul the Sixth, Evangelii Nunciandi, this great document about evangelization. And he said, you know, people have a right to hear the good news. We have a treasure that's so deep and so personal and so valuable that we shouldn't withhold them uh, this good news from the people. They have a right to hear the good news. Everybody has a right to the gospel. Everybody has a right to eternal life. And that's what we're trying to do with TV, is proclaim this to all the people, young people, old people, everywhere in between, because you have a right to eternal life. And we as stewards of the gospel are trying to make that known to all people. Father, uh, and in your travels yeah. also, yeah. and you've had dealings with lots of other Catholic organizations, and getting back to technology, which organizations, outlets, um, ministries are making the best use of our, this technology? Well, certainly I'd like to say that our passionist community is. Uh, I belong to a religious community. You can see my religious habit here. We're called the Passionist. The CP after my name happens to be my initial, Cedric Pizania, but it's Congregation of the Passion. And we have a, a daily, uh, excuse me, a weekly mass, the Sunday mass that's broadcast nationally. We also have a TV station in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Uh, my programs that air around the nation live with passion. So different religious communities, I think, are taking up the, the call to proclaim the gospel. Different dioceses are doing it. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think everybody is participating in it like they can because, as I said, it's very costly. But people, I think, you know, through the websites, uh, they're trying to dabble in it and get involved and in producing little videos and YouTube videos. I was giving a, a talk to young people. It's called Cafe Catholica in Houston. We must have had about six, 700 young people there, 20s and their 30s, very dynamic. It was very wonderful. And we had a question and answer period right after. Father Cedric, how can we reach out to the community? How can we do it? And I said, well, what you need to do is be creative. You need to live with passion. You need to take the initiative. And part of the initiative taking was, I don't know if you've ever seen some of these YouTube videos that have gone viral. A few. Young, <laughs> young people. <laughs> they do it. Yes, that they have this it. creativity and this initiative. If you can create some, you watching me right now, if you could create something, use your creativity, use the Spirit of God, let the Spirit of God work through you, use your ideas, dream dreams and see visions, and create something, and watch. God will bless it, and maybe it'll go viral, and you can reach out to people. So, you know, we, we live in this age of technology that uh, everybody has a platform now. You know, people use it for evil. It was made for good. 
And uh, you can do it. You can make a difference. This new evangelization isn't just for me as a priest or Rosa or Maria as a producer and here at the TV station. It's for everybody. The new evangelization is for you sharing the gospel on a local level or by technology if you have the courage and the, uh, and the initiative and the creativity. So it, let's not be shy. Let's not be timid. Because you got to go I, out I of think, yourself. That's you know, right. we... Many of us Catholics, those of a certain age, <laughs> I think, and even even some younger folks, uh, we are timid about sharing our faith, and we are timid about stepping out in faith and trying new tools, new techniques right. to reach each other. So well, uh, go me, forth in the Holy Spirit, you're yeah, saying. About timidity, <laughs> let me just share this. You know, St. Francis of Assisi said, Preach the gospel, and if necessary, use words. So he talked about <laughs> primarily how you preach the gospel is by your life, by your actions. But, but the documents like Evangelii Nunciandi say, sooner or later you have to explicitly, specifically share what it is that causes the joy in your life. And that's a personal relationship with Jesus. So, you know, you can be joyful and give to people, but sooner or later you've got to tell them why you're that way. And that's your faith in Jesus. And you don't be people over the head with the Bible and you don't beat people over the head with the catechism and you certainly, you know, you don't be mean to people, but you share the joy. You share how God has touched you. You tell them your story. People love stories. That's how I preach. I preach with stories. I preach using humor. I preach using real life experience. I share, I'm a witness. I share what's happened to me. And when you do that, people don't argue. They're looking for it. You know, so, so be joyful, show your actions, tell stories, uh, people will love it. And they become really interested in your story because they can probably see something in your story that reflects their life. That's and right. And they can tap right into That's that. That's right. We're all part of a common humanity. You know, no one's an island unto themselves. We're all part of a continent. So your story is my story in some ways. We're all part of it. And I, Frederick Buchner one time said, God created people because God loves stories. <laughs> and we're all a story, and our chapters exactly. are unfolding every day. And we're all God's beloved children. Yes, we and are. And I think we need to keep that in mind. Father, the, every, our viewers can see this again on YouTube. We will put this oh, on YouTube. And uh, we are so blessed to have you with us. It has been such an honor the and a privilege. The time went by so fast. I know. Well, we sh we're talking about the gospel and how yes, it needs right. to be shared in this new age right. with all the tools that God has given us. Mm -hmm. You are a shining example and of you that. you are too. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Father. And we're going to keep doing that. And Father Cedric, thank you again so much. And don't forget Father Cedric's website. Right. FatherCedric.org. And I just want to say hello to all you folks in Fresno and Bakersfield. Thank you so much for watching Live With Passion. Don't just live, live with passion.